So, this battery charger that I pulled out of my last mailbag, several people in the comments seemed to be concerned that it was going to explode, burn down my house, um, cause cancer, explode batteries, do all kinds of evil things. So, let's take a look at that and figure out whether or not this thing is a hazard to the world or worth the two or three bucks that I paid for it. The reason that I got this thing in the first place is to sort of upgrade my uh, my 18650 charging to something a little bit more elegant. Uh, a few of the options that I've been using is just a battery holder with one of these little charge discharge modules on it, hacked into a USB uh, cord, which works, and I can sort of tell what's going on with it uh, by using one of these charger doctors. Or, um, I've got another one here, which just has a USB female on it. It's pretty much the same board. I think it is actually the same board, just this one's actually got a USB on it. And I've got a couple of outputs from the, from the boosted 5 volts to, I think that's a boosted 5 volts. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've used this one. 4.08. Okay, so no, that's just the battery voltage. Oh yeah, I remember. I used to have it going back when this thing was on a breadboard. I had a boost converter on there. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Okay, so that's just a charge protection module. And this is a tiny old crappy 18650. It's only got 812 milliamp hours capability the last time I tested it. Regardless, that's not the point. Um, so these little charge modules on here, I guess that's not a horribly ugly way of doing it. Um, what else have I got? Um... I've got this little guy, which is a constant current um, or constant voltage charging module. And I've been, where did it go now? Just another one of these little battery holders with clips on it and just clip it onto the back here. So this guy here, it's constant. He's a constant current, constant voltage. You can adjust the voltage there and the current there. Um, and right now I've got it set for 4.2 volts out. It's got 18 volts coming in. And hit the enter button to start it. This blue light shows that this is a full battery, and it is because I just finished charging it moments ago. Um, so that is an option too. Actually, what do I have it set for, for its current limit? So yeah, I've got it set for about 450 milliamps. To current limit out. So, and for most of these batteries, most of these 18650s, that's a reasonable current limit. So that's not too horrible. It takes care of the charging requirements, but I mean, it's a little bit janky sitting there. It's not horrible. Um, then, oh, just for completeness, I've got one of these things, which is basically a discharge capacity tester. Um, you tell it the cutoff voltage and it discharges the battery down and shows you the milliamp hours when it's finished. And you need to power it from five volt USB there and then it just takes the battery in here. And again, I just got one of these on there. So this battery is about half discharged right now for re experimental reasons that we'll see in a moment. This charger uh, claims to normally output 3.7 volts at 500 milliamps, but it charges up to 4.2 volts, plus or minus 1%, um, before it cuts off. In the descriptions, let's go and take a look at the description on eBay just as a refresher. So on eBay, it says about it, oh, uh, multiple sizes of lithium battery in a cylindrical shape. That's reasonable enough. The little slider adjusts. But um, it automatically identifies 3.6 volt lithium ion rechargeable batteries. The red light is charging and the green light is automatic. Stop. Turn into trickle long term plug. That concerns some people that it claims to uh, turn into a trickle long term. Which, yeah, uh, 18.6 oh, lithium ion batteries don't really like that. However, elsewhere, it says it cuts off charging, including. On the back of it, it says that uh, it has a charging end at 4.2 volts. 
So that's something that we might want to take a peek at. Um, and I also want to measure if it really does 500 milliamps. Other than that, there's not much else to say about it. So let's grab our battery that's been half discharged here. Get that out of the way. Not battery. I keep calling them batteries. They're cells. I know they're cells. Everybody calls them batteries. Everybody who casually talks about these things calls them batteries. I know that they're cells. So this one that's kind of half discharged is sitting at about 3.7 volts. Huh. Okay. I thought I discharged it a bit further. Anyway. So we will put it in. Um, so these ones, the flat, side, the flat end here is the negative, And the one with a little ridge on it is the positive end. And the positive end on this goes that away. So toss it in there. That's showing red. Now I wanted to measure the charging current on this thing. So before we get too carried away, I'm going to bring in a janky little piece of machinery that I've created here. This, it is two little strips of brass with about four layers of Kapton tape between it and then into the current input of the meter here. So I'll set that to 10 amps because this thing claims to be 500. And uh, I'll wrestle this in, which is not going to be easy, I'm sure. So yeah, so the meter is in series and it's just powering that LED at like negligible levels. So I'll throw that back up to 10 amps. Um, plug this guy in that orientation just so you can see it easier and turn it on. Hmm. That's interesting. And is that it's sort of bouncing between 70 milliamps, 80 milliamps and then back down again. Okay. I'm going to watch this guy for a little bit and just see what happens. I don't know why it's charging so low, but I mean, that's going to be a slow charge rate. It's not going to cook the battery cell. That's for sure. But uh, I'm going to leave this going for a few minutes and, uh, see what happens. Hmm. So it's bouncing up as high as 50, 150 milliamps. Um, it's still nowhere near the 500 promised but I doubt it's going to boil that battery. Hmm. It's going to be a slow charge though at that rate. Okay. Well, that's, uh, whatever. So, um, let's see what it does with a fully charged battery like this one. Now this one is, where are we here? This one's sitting at 4.3 volts. So it's actually just a hair overcharged from charging in this guy. Oops. So it's, it's also trying to put 30 to 60 milliamps into it. Okay. I'm going to let that run for a little while. It, oh, what color is that? Can anyone tell me? I'm going to go and use an app, a colorblind app on my phone to tell me if that one's red or green. Bicolor LEDs are the work of the devil. Nobody should use red, green, bicolor LEDs. If you have to use a bicolor LED, use like blue and something else so that people can see it properly. Arr. Oh, okay. So it is green, which means it thinks it has finished charging. Okay. Okay, so even though that is green now and claims to be finished charging, it's still trying to poke a little bit of current into the thing. Hmm. That may not be the best option for long-term storage. So far, the verdict is it charges slower than it says, and even though it claims to be finished charging, it isn't really. But it's pretty close. Okay. Now the fun part. Let's rip it apart. I assume that there's another screw hiding underneath there. 
but we'll see. I'm going to try not to be completely destructive because I still want to use this thing if I can. Yeah, it feels like there is still another screw underneath there. I'm going to assume it's under there anyway. Don't feel it. Oh, there it is. Yep. Slightly off center. Interesting. Why oh, that is. I need some. Okay, do I need some prying action in here? Come in. Oh, you buggers. That'll do it. Now watch it just fall. Yeah. Okay. I should have known there'd be a reason for that screw to be off center. Oops. Okay, so the... AC power terminals just hinge up and and make contact there on those spring terminals. Okay, it's a little shady, but uh, we got one wire going up to the moving terminal. Okay, I got LED up there. We have a transistor. We have the little chip which is doing the magic. Tiny little dip there, too. The silk screen looks like it's not to be trusted. It thinks that this is a 470 microfarad cap, but in reality, it's 220. Tiny little signal diodes. I wouldn't expect those to be doing much power rectification. Um, there's one larger rectifier diode. Can I read it? Uh, the silk screen calls it a 4007. Okay. Uh... Transistor, what is it? where is the transistor connected to? So there is, there's that lead, capacitor to cross it. So the one side of the charging is coming out of the chip and the other side of the charging is coming out of the chip as well. Huh. I was thinking about doing a full reverse engineering and drawing of this, but I could not find a data sheet for that little chip there. There's what it calls itself, the HT3582DM. Could not find a data sheet for that. If your Googling is better than mine, go for it. Um, did find a data sheet for this transistor, though. It is an NPN transistor. It's good for 400 volts across the uh, collector emitter and about a third of an amp across for a collector current. This transformer has one winding there and then two independent windings. Um, the AC does pass through it. There's one side of the AC there. And this side of the AC line goes through a diode. That's the, the chunkier rectifier diode, the 4007 and into this same track here. So this side has, it's, it's weird, I don't completely understand it, but without, without knowing what's going on in this chip, it's kind of pointless to dig too deep into this thing. It's not the most pretty thing. These diodes are kind of sitting at cattywampus angles. This transistor was skished down flat like that. These capacitors were down flat just for clearance, I'm guessing. But, uh, I don't know. It's not too horrible. Those slots there, normally you would think that they're separating the AC line. And, and I guess they kind of are. Um, but then the other side of the transformer... I don't know which one's primary, which one's secondary. I'm going to guess that this is probably secondary over here, the single winding. Um, that goes down the outside of there, the two sides of that. And those are super narrow to there. So 
that's not really I mean there's gaps cut in there whoop de doo but the uh, two sides of the transformer are basically just separated by that little gap there so that's not really performance um I don't know not much else to say in here I'm thinking that I am still going to use this but I'm going to keep an eye on it I'm not going to leave it completely unattended my normal lithium ion charging area is sitting on the concrete in the back corner of my shop here anyway so even if it does start getting hot or whatever it's sitting on concrete with nothing combustible right beside it so not too concerned but hmm I'm not sure what to uh what kind of a verdict to put on this thing it's not as robust as you would hope but for the couple of bucks that I paid for it it's not as bad as I'd feared now the fun part is it still work or is it going to blow up is that right yeah the light comes on seems to still be working yeah it's working about as well as it did before which is not much I guess but oh well I'm gonna stick with it it's not uh, I'm not convinced that it's gonna burn down my house uh, but I am gonna keep an eye on it it doesn't doesn't get hot while I'm using it so that's a good sign it's pushing or it's it's allowing the cell to pull 150 milliamps I don't know what the hell that negative was all of a sudden maybe that's it self-testing or something I don't know maybe it's just the jankiness of my thing anyway I'll keep it going if it uh if it explodes we'll do another tear down and just see what fails how's about that okay well that's just a hopefully quick little look at this thing since people were asking about it thanks for watching as always comments questions down there talk to you later